Well, obviously, guys, I'm uh, very proud of our team. Um, you know, we really wanted to make a statement in this game. A lot of people talking about our schedule, and um, you know, we have a lot of respect for LSU and their team. Um, and you know, I think we played a, a pretty complete game. You know, today, both sides of the ball. Uh, I'm sure there's always things that we can improve on, but. Um, talked about controlling the line of scrimmage. I think we did that. Um, we did have a turnover on a long pass, but um, you know, I was really, really pleased with the explosive plays that we're able to make, the way we were controlled, the tempo of the game on offense. You know, I think it took the crowd out of the game a little bit. The defense played really well. I mean, to shut out this team is really a pretty significant accomplishment. And um, you know, I think it shows the players that when you're really focused on something and you got the right kind of mindset and intensity, um, everybody, there was going to be a choice that everybody had to make at some point in the game today uh, is whether they're going to keep fighting uh, or you know, they were going to surrender to the circumstances and the situation and playing out there. And even when we started early in the game, moved the ball up and down the field and didn't really cash in on the points um, and, you know, stubbed ourselves stubbed our toe a couple times, got some negative plays, missed executions, but didn't finish drives, but everybody just kept playing. Everybody made the choice to, kept, to keep playing and grinding, and uh, I think that was the key to us eventually getting control of the game in the second half. And, you know, Tua played really well. Uh, Damian Harris obviously had a great game. Najee had a great game. Um, you know, from an injury standpoint, um, Ruggs got – Nobody knows for sure. I think kicked in the side of the leg. Um, X-rays were negative, um, so we think it's a bruise right now. But they'll they'll further evaluate that tomorrow. Not Najee got an ankle sprain. Doesn't seem to be severe. Um, and I think that um, you know hopefully Jalen, who is just starting to turn the corner, um, has a little bit of trouble running, uh, but can actually throw and do things in the pocket. So hopefully he'll turn the corner and um, be ready next week. But Mac Jones would have been the backup quarterback today if we needed him. Coach, we'll open up to questions. They're having trouble here, and there's no mic in here, so you may have to speak up just a little bit. What did Tula show you on that? What did Tula show you on that touchdown run, considering that he's been dealing with a knee injury? Well, he doesn't have a knee injury anymore, and um, he, he's really recovered pretty well from that. Um, and he looked like he could run pretty well to me. So, but he's done that in practice. I think the time off, having a bye week, uh, really helped him a lot. But he's made progress every week, uh, and I think part of it is, you know, regaining confidence. And I think, you know, making a run like that obviously gives you a lot of confidence. Did you get a sense during the week line? that you think they were you're going to be able to dominate their offensive line like you did? No, I did not. I mean, they 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 have moved the ball and ran the ran the ball effectively uh, against everybody they played against. I mean, Georgia's got a good defense. Mississippi State's got a good defense. So, you know, they had a good plan against us in the beginning of the game, and we made some quick adjustments, and the players did a good job of adapting to it. How big was Tungo Veloa's ability to bounce back after the, the hit and then also after throwing the interception? They had two touchdown drives after both of us. Well, I, I'm not going to tell you where he got hit. Um, <laughs> but... I was actually happy to hear that that's where he got hit because I knew he'd be right back. <laughs> you talked about wanting to make a, a statement today. Uh, you talked about wanting to make a statement today. How much was going right at LSU's best defenders early on kind of part of that statement? No, we, we had a game plan, um, you know, of how we wanted to run the ball, and uh, we weren't really attacking any particular person, you know. Um, you know, a lot of the RPOs were things that we threw today, you know, based on whatever they played. And sometimes we ran it, sometimes we threw it. And Tua does a really good job at that. So um, very instinctive, and we got some hard guys to cover. And I think they have a really good defense and a really good secondary. But I do think they got a little bit tired as the game went on because they played a lot of plays. I don't know what the, the time of possession or the total number of plays, but we had 79 plays. They had 60. A lot of their plays were at the end of the game when they were at minute. So that's you know, pretty pretty tough on defensive players. Coach, your, uh, your defense held up for 12 rushing yards. What was the key to stopping that rushing attack? 
Well, rushing statistics in college football are not correct because sacks come off of rushing yards. So I don't know how many rushing yards they really had, uh, but I thought we did a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage and playing the run very well. Uh, created a lot of you know, very positive down and distance situations for us to be able to play a lot of split safeties. And you know, other than the, the kind of crazy play at the end of the game when it looked like we had the guy sacked and he threw the ball out there and we missed a couple tackles and the guy ran for about 40 yards, you know, they didn't make a lot of explosive plays. So, um, and those are the two things that we felt were really important, you know, going into this game, limit explosive plays. Uh, and because we could stop the run, we played a lot of split safety coverages, which really helps to do that. With the win, you obviously lock up the, the Western division. What does that mean for you? To, to Is that back? true? Because I didn't really didn't know that. I yeah, thought I we'd have to win one more game, but I guess you guys know more about it than I do. But look, we played a good game here today. All right. And we're going to have to continue to improve and play a good game next week. Uh, we're going to play another good team next week. So um, our focus is going to be on, hey, you did a great job in this game, and I'm proud of you, but we got to do it again. And that's got to be who we are. What does it say about your team to come in this environment, which was outstanding tonight, and play the way you did? It says a lot about their competitive character, but I think they wanted to make a statement. Um, you know, all week long in terms of, you know, what kind of team we really have. And they had the opportunity to do it probably in against a very good team who was number three in the country, probably in the toughest environment to play in. Um, so what better opportunity is there to make a statement than in the circumstance that we were in? Nick, is that, is that something you talk to your team about? We want to make a statement because of what everybody's saying about our schedule? something you address. Yeah, I never tell them what you're saying when you say good stuff, but if you say anything <laughs> bad, I always tell them. <laughs> How much does that motivate them? Um, I want them to be motivated because they want to be good and they have individual goals and aspirations for how they want to play, uh, but also their commitment to their teammates uh, and how they want to play together and what we can accomplish as a team. So um, hopefully the external factors aren't something that uh, motivates them too much, but their pride and performance is certainly something that um, every, every player really wants to do a great job. A couple I think more? deep down inside. What kind of, how, how frustrating are the kicking game problems? Um, look, no sense in being frustrated. We're just going to get it right. Um, and I think the guys are capable. Um, you know, and they do it in practice and they do it very well. Uh, we get out here and overkick the ball. The first extra point was not the kicker's fault. I mean, the holder mishandled the snap. Um, the second one, he kicked low, uh, which was an issue. Um, but we have a guy that's capable, and we, we have to do a good job of help, helping him technically get better uh, and gain confidence so that he can go out there and, and do a good job for us. He's kicked off pretty well for us this year. He's just been a little inconsistent at times on the, the, the field goal stuff, and I think most of it is when he tries to overkick the ball. Nick, Last question. Nick, you said you want to make a statement. What do you think such a statistically lopsided win against the number three team in the country says about this team? Well, I don't think statistics mean anything. Uh, I think the way we competed in a game and made plays when we needed to make them, whether it was take the air out of the ball at the end of the game, whether to get them stopped in two minutes, um, I, I think you know those are the things that are really, really important. I mean, after the long kickoff return, you know they had an opportunity to get back in the game, and we go out there on the defense on the 45-yard line and go three and out. I mean, that's the kind of competitive character and, and you know the kind of you know will that you're looking for. And I thought the drive when we went down the field and scored on the last one um, was really you know how you're supposed to finish a game on offense. I think we ran the ball nine times in a row, and um, that's the way you need to do it to finish a game when you have a lead. All right, thanks. Thank you.